Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, classmate. Our topic is all about the student with emotional and behavioral disorder. So, my topic is all about the definition of emotional and behavioral disorders. The definition that had the most impact on special education in the United States was written by Ellie Bauer in 1997, Science 2002. Three factors were considered in determining if a child is emotionally disturbed, intensity, pattern, and duration of behavior. The first one, intensity refers to the severity of the child's problem. The second one, pattern means the time when the problem occurs. And the last, third one, duration refers to the length of the time the child's problem has been present. The idea definition of serious emotional disturbance in 2003, a condition exhibiting one or more the following characteristics over a long period of time, chronicity and to a marked degree severity, which adversely affects educational performance difficulty in school. A. An inability to learn which cannot be explained by intellectual, sensory, and health factors. B. An inability to build, maintain satisfactory interpersonal relationship with peers and teachers. C. An appropriate type of behavior or feelings under normal circumstances. D. A general pervises mood of anaphenes of depression. For A, a tendency to develop physical symptoms or fears associated with personal or school problems. So, the reason why that the students having an emotional and behavioral disorders because of the depression. Uh, malimbawa na lang tungkol sa pagkakaroon na yun na hinaharap na problema tulad ng pandemic na naging dahil yan ng pagkakaroon ng mga tao ng depression, financial problem, family problem, and that a person's having with a emotional and behavioral disorder comes from the different situation. So let's come now to the next topic about the CCBD or Council for Children with Behavioral Disorders definition of emotional and behavioral disorders. So we have here emotional and behavioral disability by or characterized by behavioral and emotional responses in a school program so different from appropriate age cultural or ethic norms that they adversely affect, affect educational performance the definition of ccbd focuses on the characteristics of special education needs of children and youth with emotional and behavioral disorders all other proposed proposed definition agree that the behavioral of children with emotional and behavioral disorder differs markedly or extremely and chronically or, or over time form that the present social or cultural norms. So let's come now to the classification of emotional and behavioral disorder. We have two cl classification of emotional disorder. The first one is the American Psychiatric Association, 1994, cited by Zoyne Totosento. The second one is Koi st Statistical Classification. In the American Psychiatric Association, we have the first one, the person ex experiences significant pain of, or distress and inability to work or play in an increased risk of date or loss of freedom in important areas or of life. The second one, the source of the problem lies within the person due to the biological factors, learned habits or mental processes and is not simply or no response to specific life events such as the date of loved one. The third one, the problem is not a deliberate reaction to conditions such as poverty, prejudice, government policy or other conflicts with society. While in the Kauai statistical classification, we have in letter A, the conduct disorder, which refers to the characterized, characterized by disobedience, being disrupted, getting into fights, being busy, and temper tantrums. For B, anxiety withdrawal, sometimes called anxiety disorder, is manifested by social withdrawal, anxiety, depression, feelings, or ob inferiority, guilt, shyness and unhappiness. For C, in 
immaturity issues, in short, attention span, extreme passivity, daydreaming, preference for younger playmates and clumsiness. And for D, social aggression is marked by trousy, trousy, gang membership, tip, and the feeling of pride and belonging to a delicate subculture. So about to the second topic, the classification of emotional and behavioral disorder. We told the American Psychiatric Association and the Kauai Statistical Classification. So in that classification, and depression is nakawa talaga sa loob ng bahay at sa labas. Sa loob ng bahay, alibawaan, ang isang estudyante ay nakakaranas ng family problem or ano, lack, of, uh, lack of attention to their ano, family. And then for the outdoor, with the students, ay napapasali sa mga gang, na-influensya sa, na sa mga kaibigan, tulad nilang pagkakaroon nila ng mga masama influensya ng mga kaibigan, na ang pakay ay pagnanakaw, nasali sa mga gang, na nagsasali ng depression, na, ng isang tao na kung saan nadadali nila sa kahit anong sitwasyon. Hello ma'am and classmates. So, I am the second reporter, which is my topic is all about the influence of the physical and socio-cultural environment on personality development. So, first, the variation in human behavior are influenced by the basic determinants of personality development. So, number one is the person genetic background or heredity. So, yung children or the student is experiencing uh, influence in heredity which is in inborn process of their behavior like in uh, their behavior which is uh, inborn uh, stress inborn sensitive behavior and so on the, the second is environmental factors so in environmental factors there are some uh, distinct uh, example of behavior that can affect their uh, characteristics which is uh, like in school which is their peers or their classmates and their friends and other people that can uh, encounter in outdoor so the third is the general patterning of development so in general patterning of development the, it, it is the behavior which is developed uh, in standard form of one student or uh, child. Come now to the uh, two types of behavior, which is one is adaptive and maladaptive behavior. So let's focus on the adaptive behavior. So what is the adaptive behavior? So it refers to a person's behavior patterns that ha that have desirable consequence and foster her, his or her well-being and ultimately that of the group. The term well-being means the person works towards growth, fulfillment, and actualization of his or her potential. So ito yung behavior na positive yung uh, consequence or outcomes of one's children behavior. So like uh, in friends which is they are sharing information and they always uh, helping each other to have a good uh, behavior or attitude that they can uh, share with other people. So next is maladaptive behavior which is result to negative and undesirable consequences and interference with the person optimal functioning and growth. So ito naman yung mga behavior na negative yung kalalabasan. Example which is in student which is uh, involved with gang or the fraternity which is in the outcomes either can uh, harm to their personality and behavior that which they can uh, encounter negative consequences. So let's come now to the patterning of personality development. So children's personality development is shaped differently in different socio-cultural settings. Nevertheless, there are specific and interrelated inter inter trends in development and are 
universal in nature. So there are there are six patterning of personal development. So first, dependence of to self direction. The normal progression is seen in the fetus and the newly born infant who are totally dependent on the mother and the family members until the toddler begins to explore the environment on his or her own. Second, pleasure to reality and self-control. The human tendency is to seek pleasure and to avoid pain and discomfort. The third, ignorance to our knowledge. The infant is born with certain reflexive and instinctive behavior patterns. The fourth, incompetence to competence. From birth onward to childhood and adolescence, the person masters the intellectual, emotional, social, and other competencies essential for adulthood. Fifth, diffuse to articulated self-identity, which is the core self-identity gradually emerges as the infant differentiates himself or herself from the different environment. The last is amoral to moral. Children learn very early in life that certain forms of behavior are right, good, correct, while others are bad, wrong, and incorrect to do. So, the summarization of my topic about patterning of personality development, uh, which is the student um, develops their behaviors in consecutively years, which is they encounter different settings of environment, different kinds of uh, behaviors they encountered in different people in home which is their family and in outside which is their peers or friends so they can encounter consequences like the they produce behaviors to the other which is uh, not good in there and the other one is they can uh, share their behaviors with a good or bad or correct to the other people so their behaviors uh, develops from different stages and that stages have the consequence or particular outcomes to their behaviors which is uh, the disorder is which is not always avoidable from the student or the child Hi ma'am and hi classmate. I am the third reporters and this is my topic. Um, my topic is about etiological factors and causes of emotional and behavioral disorders. There are two factors in etiological or causes of emotional and behavioral disorders, biological and environmental. About biological factors, authorities believe all children born with biological determined temperament the inborn, the inborn temperament may not directly cause a behavioral problem to occur but may predispose the child, the child behavioral disturbance. Out. About biological factors, um, this is the child with have an inborn kwan, EBD or emotional and behavioral disorders just like sensitive behavior, love understanding and Burn of stress. About environmental factors, there are two one, factors, which is home and family influence. The relationship that a child has with the parents during the early years is critically to the way he learned to behave. So this is about behaviors of the child, which is the parent they guide their children to have a good manners or discipline. And the second factor about environmental is school experience. So this school experience may there are experience in school where children spend a large part of the day that can precipitate the occurrence of behavioral problems. So they influence the about schools. Every children influence their own kwan behavior. So and bawa sini one person that have a good manners does one person that, or one children, or one child, or one student that have an bad behavioral like an addict, addict and pan drugs or illegal drugs, then have an biases like smoking or something addict and computers like that.
that can influence badly into good discipline or good manners. Um, next chapter of my report, um, this is the characteristic of children and youth with emotional and behavioral disability. So, ito yung makikita yung mga characteristic or bi biological behavior of one child. So, the intelligent, intellectual characteristics, and academic achievement. One is to third could not pass competence examinations for their grade level. Number two is they have the lowest grade point average of a group of students with disability. Third is 44% failed one more courses in their most recent school. Fourth is they have a higher absenteeism rate than any other disability category missing average of 18 days of school of per year. 48% drop out of high school compared to 30% of their students with disabilities and 24% of all high school students. The last is over 50% are not employed with two years of existing school. So we have here antisocial behavior. These children manifest consistent and frequent disorder patterns of behavioral that violate the rules and regulation, regulations at home, the laws of community and the country. So this behavior is contradict to a normal or to a standard behavior of a person. So here is the another disorder, which is oppositional defiant disorder or ODD. As and the name implies, Student or individuals with oppositional defiant disorder consistently go against, oppose, defy, and show hostility towards authority figures. These are the symptoms are one is often loses one's temper, second is often argues with adults' requests or rules, third is often activity, activity actively defies or refuses to comply with adults' Request or rules. Fourth is often deliberately annoys people. Fifth is often blames others for one's mistakes or misbehavior. Six is six is often touchy or sexually annoyed by others. Seventh is often angry and resentful. Eight is or the last is often spiteful and vindictive. Hello, ma'am. So. I am the last reporter, so my topic is all about um, externalizing and internalizing behavioral disorder. So, common examples are out of sip behavior, making unnecessary noise, truancy, constant talking to self and others, disobedience, inattention, pers persistent lying, constant blaming of others. So, this comes up to aggressive and violent behavior. So what is aggression? Aggression refers to acts that are abusive, that severely interfere with activities of other people or objects and events in the environment. Delinquency, the legal term that refers to the criminal offenses committed by an adolescent. Delinquency is a behavioral disorder. So, identification and assessment. The procedure are similar to those used in other types of disabilities. Direct observation is done to determine the frequency, duration, topography, magnitude, and stimulus control of the behavior. So, let's come now to edu educational approaches. There are four educational approaches. The first one is Applied Behavior Analysis Aim is to decrease the undesirable and maladaptive behavior and increase the occurrence of the, of the desirable behavior. Second is Teaching School Skills Third, Alternative Response Fourth, Teaching Self-Management Skills So let's come now to intervention procedure that minimize behavior problems. So the first one is ecological intervention. It's, a, it's built on the principle that behavior problems exist within the child's environment where a constant global interaction between the child and the environment occurs. So that second is the positive intervention. 
is, is a universally accepted intervention designed to increase the display of desirable behavior and to decrease or reduce the opportunity for the, for the, for the negatively viewed behavior to occur through a system of reward. The, the, the third is role setting is an easy and effective way to manage behavior in a classroom. So the part, the part is piecing the lesson using a variety of activities are simply yet effective ways of managing behavior. The fifth is cognitive strategy. Self-monitoring, self-extraction, self-control strategies and are utilized. And the last is cognitive model. It's also called information processing model and emphasizes strategies for memory. Thank you, ma'am, for your being good to all of us. And then, thank you for your concerns, effort, care, love, understanding. And then, I hope that your career will be continue and successful someday. And lastly, ma'am, thank you for the knowledge. And thank you for influencing us as a good future educator. And God bless po, ma'am. Thank you. And thank you, ma'am, for being kind and considerate teacher to all of us and just keep what you are doing today and God bless. Thank you ma'am for the learnings that you gave to us especially to this subject about special education which I, uh, we have learned so much and many topics we uh, seen in the modules and Stay humble, ma'am, and delete it, happy birthday. Thank you, ma'am, for listening to our topic about the student with emotional and behavioral disorder. That's all our report, and have a nice day. God bless.